The next we can do, next thing we can do is start to configure a server. So to do that, first let's open up the server trunk cut release folder, and then open up the server.sln. And while that's loading, let's get a command window open. And in the command window, we're going to want to copy some DLLs into the directory that server will execute from, just because this is uh, simpler and more effective than uh, changing the environment path. So in that command window, we're going to change directory to c colon program files slash mysql slash mysql c connector slash lib slash opt. And we're going to copy lib mysql out of that directory. So, that, so rather than a cd, well, let's change directory to that opt directory. And then in this directory, we copy the libmysql.dll. And we're going to copy that to c colon uh, checkmate slash server trunk cut release slash debug. And we're also going to copy that to Teresius uh, trunk cut release slash debug. And I already have that there because I did this just a second ago. So once we've done that, then we want to change directory to c colon checkmate slash open SSL. And in this directory, we're going to copy the lib eay32.dll to c colon checkmate server trunk cut release debug. <coughs> And that should be all that's necessary in order to uh, configure DLLs to let the software run. Now inside server, which we just opened up, you should double click on the server config. You should, first you'll have to expand everything. So you can expand the sources, headers, and resource files. But the server config is the copy of the example config, which you've copied over and renamed. First thing you want to do is make sure that you change your password to whatever you used as a password when you were setting up MySQL. Uh, the second thing is if you have installed in physical system rather than virtual, you may need to change the sniffing interface. If you have uh, multiple uh, network interfaces, I'll show you where you determine your network interface when we start running. And then you want to make sure that your default source IP is set to the VM or physical system where you're running server in Teresius, and that your default test IP is set to the server where you're running the client, which is this VM for us. Also, if you want to test the polling feature where you continuously ask for measurements, then you'll want to set the client's uh, host name or IP into the hosts to measure as well. And uh, no further configuration is needed beyond that. So once you've configured your server config file appropriately, you can just hit this little start debugging icon or you can hit F5 to start debugging and that will build the software and start running it. And in this case, mine only ran and built because I had already built it. Mine only ran and built so fast because I had already built it. All right, so within this window, uh, if you have multiple network interfaces, like you're doing this on a physical system, you want to pay attention to right here before the enter a command number, and it says one or two. These are the numbers which are used in the config file. These are passed to WinPCAP in order to determine which network interface it should sniff on in order to detect round trip time for packets. So once server is running, we're going to go back out and start up Teresius. So you should open Teresius trunk cut release and then Teresius.sln. And then within this configuration file, the only thing that should need to be changed uh, in the Teresius config on the side, the only thing that should need to be changed is your password. And then from there, you can hit F5 or press the play to start debugging. Once we're actually running server, there's only a couple options available. Option 17 does a 
tick stamp with the number of iterations that you request. So I can say, uh, sorry, a timing request with the number of iterations you request. So if I say option 17 and then I hit 1, it's going to do one iteration of the self checksum loop and it's going to use one as the nonce. And this is just useful for testing. So if you send that, it will send you back the self checksum and then it'll tell you that it took, for instance, 2,000 microseconds to complete, so 2 milliseconds, and that there's no difference in the checksum detected, which means that Teresius calculated the same checksum as the server. So this is what the client sent back, this is what Teresius calculated, and the server value that I got from the client matched what it got from Teresius, so everything's good. You can also then do uh, timing test type 18, which will just do 2.5 million iterations, which is what we used for the experiments. Uh, you'll only be able to do option 31 and 32 if you've done this on physical systems and the configuration guidelines are on the website and I will show that I should video of that at a later time when I get recording capability on physical systems.